Uh, we're so pleased to welcome in the Hall of Famer, Weapon X himself, Brian Dawkins. B Doc, thanks for joining us. Um, I think every time I see the Eagles game with the fans and everybody walking around, the number of 20 jerseys has to outweigh anybody active. And I know that you never like to talk about that, but you are pretty much everyone's favorite player growing up. You know, what is it like just kind of seeing this team this year and still being a part of such a special thing? And then, of course, the Kelly Greens. Yeah. So uh, one one at a time, one question at a time, right? We got to – so first of all, it's very humbling to see those things, to see that my number is still – I never – that's not – something that I necessarily said that it's going to happen in my life. I was not a goal of mine. And to have to this point, what, 11, 12 years later, people still, you know, have him dawn in my jersey with pride and all of those things. It's an extremely humbling thing. And I've, I've told myself, and I will never get used to that. I will never let myself get used to that. That'll always be something that will will be a blessing to me because I see success through my life, through my 16-year-old eyes, and he can't believe that people are wearing his doggone number. Um, you talk about the team. So so what, what was the second question? I, I got, I got just, caught up on Just that the, the excitement around the team right now. Obviously, you know, we're in the bye week, and um, it, they've had a chance to kind of decompress and maybe hopefully get healthy. But the 8-1, the and one, um, the only team uh, that's 8-1 and one right now in the league. And me – I'm a little strange this way because playing in the league as long as I did, being blessed to have the success that we had, and and understanding how 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 the year can go for a team can start off one way and turn to another way. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that they are an ugly eight and one. To be honest with you, <laughs> like every win is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but for those individuals that need a little extra kind of kick in the rump, rump a little bit every, every once in a while. Now you have you have a team that's winning, but they have to find different ways to win. And it's oftentimes because of mistakes that have been made. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of mistakes to be corrected and to be um, changed for the season to not turn out to be one that we want don't want to happen whether we're not the last team standing right so again i i just love the fact that they have the capability and the ability and, and as a professional i know you, sh you you're thinking that you're supposed to do that anyway right mm -hmm. i understand that but charles barkley said it like this and I, I think he's i think he's the one that originated this that success uh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, wins and success is the greatest deodorant there is, right? It covers mm. up a whole lot of stinky stuff, right? And so that's what sometimes success does. Sometimes success for some people, it doesn't allow them or get them in the mindset that I need to improve. Why? Because we won the game. What's the big deal, right? My standards were very high. I was hard on myself regardless, but for everybody else, those individuals that needed a little extra kick in the rump a little bit every, every once in a while, even though we're winning, if you if, if your teammate did not make that play because you mm -hmm. missed that assignment, we would have lost that game. So you can have those type of tougher conversation with guys. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, you're wearing the Immortals shirt, yeah. but this is such a cool thing that you and Inspector Sports are doing. You have this your very first trading card that's that's yours and it's going to a great cost. So I want to talk to you about that, but tell me how this idea kind of came to be. Yeah. Wow. So it, it came to be, obviously, because of the career that I've been blessed to have, but also the love for the imaginary universe that's out there that has been created by different people, whether that be Stan Lee, whether that be different individuals along the way that have created mm -hmm. these opportunities for us as young people before the internet, before we had all of this dig digital technology, right? Those were our ability to then um, sometimes even be influencers. Like if you have a card that nobody else has, right? Now you all of a sudden become the dude in the neighborhood because you got this doggone card. So like it, it just brings back a whole lot of good memories for me, first of all, to to still allow myself to be that child, to be that mm -hmm. young person inside of me to come out. But this was really Jordan's like baby. Like he came up with the idea. He came up with the number systems and the, the reason why we're the reason why there's uh, 20,000. Uh, 20,000, 20 of them, obviously it's because of my name, my number. I love the number 20. And so there's other uh, factoids that you can kind of look up. 96, there's a reason why we use 96. There's a use, reason why we use nine. So all of those things gives the person who's going to buy it 
something that they can truly understand that it's limited, that this is a special mm -hmm. thing. And again, I didn't take it lightly. He didn't take it lightly. So that's why you have a, so many different aspects to it. You know, you have my the quotes on it. You know, you have so many uh, things about it to let you know that we think you're special. That's why I put, and he put so much time into it. And I love that it's called relentless, which I think is, you know, such a good single word to encapsulate you and your career um, overview, because you really were relentless on the football field and, and off of it. And so you're talking about how there's only 2020 of these, the 2020, um, and there's all kinds of fun little, there's a fun fact on the back. I'm not going to give the back away because there's a good fun fact on there that I did not know. And some Eagles fans might not be aware of, so they should have to check that out. But it also goes uh, towards your impact foundation. Tell us a little bit why that's so important to you. That's very important to me. It's, it's very important to me because in my impact foundation, we're blessing single parents with some of the resources that they need, especially the children in the household with transformational moments, allowing them to do things and go places that they probably would not be able to see and do, thereby creating in them a vision that they can then chase after that would help them possibly stay out of some of the things that their neighborhoods are into. So that's something that I was blessed to then do for myself. So I wanna bless other individuals the way that I was blessed by someone a long time ago. And then from a mental health standpoint, I talk about cerebral wellness. There's too much negative connotation attached to um, mental health. So I call it my cerebral wellness program. So we are, we're, I think we're in like 25 schools in Philadelphia, high schools. And then we're, we have about 10 to 15 in Jacksonville that are using the program. Mm -hmm. And again, it's to help them understand what it is and what it's not, the stigma behind uh, cerebral, mental health, cerebral wellness, um, the coping net coping mechanisms, um, how how to recognize when you need help, how to recognize when a friend needs help, and ultimately how to doggone get the help that you need, right? And that it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay not okay. So those are some of the things that we're doing. We also have a mentoring program that we're starting out this year um, and the Young Ambassadors program we're starting out this year. So there's a whole bunch of things that we're doing from a foundational stand, foundation standpoint to pour into the lives of our next, our next generation of, of leaders and thinkers. And, and it's so wonderful that, that some of the proceeds from the sale of these very exclusive cards will go to all of those programs you just mentioned, which, you know, of course, are going to help so many people here in the Philadelphia area and obviously outside of it, too. Um, I do want to tell people there is a few surprises, too. There's also going to be a couple of autographed cards out there, too, in, among the 2020. So uh, we have to make sure you, you check that out. We do want to tell people where they can get these cards. you got to check out spectrosportsart.com. Um, but before I, I let you go, we got to talk a little bit. And we're going to come back and we're going to do the, uh, the hurry up with you. But mm -hmm. what did you think of the Kelly Greens when you saw them on the field for the first time against the Dolphins? I was I was mad because we, <laughs> we wanted to wear them. They wouldn't let us dog on wear. So I mean, I was happy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love the fact you see the guys out there. But, but we want we was pushing for it. Like we was truly mm -hmm. pushing for the dog on Kelly Green. We wanted the Kelly Green, and they put us out there looking like UCLA. I'm like, I, I listen. I understand <laughs> the old jersey. I understand that, but we're like, no, we want the Kelly, man. Can we get the Kelly? So <laughs> love the Kelly. Look awesome, like I thought it would. Um, and and they handled business in them too. So that's the other part. Yeah. So yes, they, they did. The dog on business in them. Uh, we're so pleased to be joined by the Hall of Famer himself, Weapon X, Brian Dawkins. Brian, I know we'll see you a little bit later on in the show for the hurry up. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Well, our birds trivia tonight focuses on Brian Dawkins. He made seven Pro Bowls during his 13 year Eagles career. That's tied with Reggie White and Jason Peters for the second most in Eagles history. So our question is, who's the only Eagles player with more Pro Bowls than b -Doc? We've got the answer for you and more from b -Doc himself when Birds Huddle returns. Welcome back to Bird's Huddle. Before the break, we told you that Brian Dawkins made seven Pro Bowls during his 13-year Eagles career. That's tied with Reggie White and Jason Peters for the second most Pro Bowls in Eagles franchise history. Our question, though, who is the only Eagles player with more Pro Bowls than Brian Dawkins? The answer, Chuck Bignarek. With eight Pro Bowls during his 14-year Eagles career, Concrete Charlie, of course, two-way star, played center and linebacker, and like Brian Dawkins, Bednarik is a pro football Hall of Famer. He was inducted in 1967. 
We are so pleased once again to be joined by Brian Dawkins. He rejoins us for the Hurry Up, proudly presented by Meineke. B Doc, thanks for, for being back with us. I got three rapid fire questions for you. Number one, what is your favorite play ever when you were donning that Eagles uniform? The sack, strip, calls fumble, fumble recovery against Pittsburgh by on Big Ben um, in mm -hmm. the fourth quarter. And it was because of all the things leading up that week. I had given up a couple of plays against Dallas, and so everybody was like, oh my goodness, it's over with for dog. We need to go ahead and yeah. So, you know me, I don't I don't talk about what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you. So that that was the culmination of I'm about to show you who, what I who, what I am and what I still can do. Number two, who was the opposing quarterback who was the toughest to face? Peyton Manning. Um, and it was the system obviously that that he kind of ran and controlled um the the players that he had at the, the re receiver position probably perhaps the toughest dude for me to cover in my career is marvin harrison right so he's <laughs> it was unbelievable trying to stop his quickness because every route looked the same um and because we are in the nfc he's in the afc we don't face him all the time who was the most underrated teammate that you played with at, at any point uh, a guy that maybe just didn't get the credit he deserved Quentin Michael. When I looked at Q, I saw a dude that can do a whole lot of the things that I can do. Matter of fact, at that time in my career, there's specific things Q could do better than me, to be honest with you. Coverage and stuff like his quickness and his ability to cover. So I, I give Q a whole lot of respect.